James, thank you for taking your time to share some of your memories of Emmanuel with us. Tell us your name. James Kemple. You were baptized, confirmed, and married here yeah. in this sanctuary. So could you share some of your first memories of uh, a child or those times here at Emmanuel? Well, first of all, I wanted to say I'm glad I got to live my whole life with such a close church family here at Emmanuel. Of course, I don't remember anything about my baptism, but I do remember uh, confirmation classes with Pastor Mule Brad and uh, my confirmation in the sanctuary. Um, my wedding was special, of course. Uh, it was it. I was just glad that we got our renovation finished when we were working on the sanctuary. I know that was a, a deadline we almost didn't meet. And, um, and then we had a harpist at our wedding that was a friend of the families, and I thought that was special, and I really remembered that. I remember that because he's also passed, I think, at this point. Okay. It was very impressive. I can't remember his name, but okay. yeah. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, your family has a history of, of grilling and barbecuing, <laughs> and it's been passed down from generation to generation, yeah. but you extended that into the Emmanuel Church family. So tell us a little bit of that history. Yeah, I, I thought about that for a while, and, you know, it really took me back. I mean, this might be going too far back, but my earliest memories was being at Leon Fluger's house for the George Fluger reunion. And he would build his own pit. He would get a couple of pieces of tin, three pieces of tin, and wire them together through the nail holes and put a grate over the top. And there we had a barbecue pit for our, our reunion. And uh, fast forward 20 years, I was uh, teaching shop class at uh, Fluerville High School. And I, re I still remember Matt Bartley asked me if they could, him and some of his friends could learn welding. And so we built a barbecue pit, a professional barbecue pit. <laughs> and we started using that for different community events. And of course, Emmanuel was included in that. And uh, I wish Bob Lovett was here right now to elaborate on this, but uh, I think he was the first one that uh, mentioned barbecuing here at Emmanuel. We were raising money for the gym project in the, in the day school, and uh, he wanted to barbecue slabs of ribs for the concrete slab foundation on the gym. And that was our a big fundraiser that we held, and, and uh, that kind of was the start of the Holy Smoker group. You know, we weren't called, we didn't call ourselves the Holy Smokers back then, but uh, all the guys interested in barbecuing, whether they knew anything about it or not, we got together and, and, and we uh, did those meals for the congregation. Uh, it wasn't until Tim Rye was the council president, he said he would help take over the, the barbecuing. And, uh, of course, he was married to my cousin, which was a daughter of Max Kemple Jr., which was another famous barbecuer in the community. And uh, he was the one that made the Holy Smoker aprons and gave them the official Holy Smoker name. They were point. red, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so he really, uh, he really did a lot for the congregation and, and bringing those guys together for those meals. And so not only was it a fellowship and fun for the guys who loved grilling, yeah. but when the congregation would hear that the Holy Smokers were providing the meal, yeah. they were ready to come and partake. Right, that. exactly. And, uh, and that also then was an avenue that we didn't have to uh, find an outside vendor, right? caterer, Yep. Uh, that we were in-house, and then you had another group that helped to provide all of the trimmings that went along right. with it. Yep. So they've done multiple, uh, and it's been something, nearly a legacy that's passed on because it's transitioned to another nearly generation yep. of, it sure of has. folks. Yes. Okay. Uh, on that 
too, can you talk just a little bit about the men's breakfast? Because that, again, was pretty much a guy's thing that, that happened. Yep. I tell you, I, uh, I'm not sure when the men's breakfast got started, but I, I remember in the early years, uh, the cooks were Max, uh, Jr. Kimple and, uh, Herbert, Herbert Wolf, my uncle, Herbert Wolf and, and, uh, Hank Hester and Ernest Walston, who were not members helped in Clarence Wheeler. Mm -hmm. And that was the main group. And, uh, pastor Tom, of course, uh, had the Bible study and many people helped over the years. I mean, uh, too many to think of, uh, at this time we have my brother, Hal Kemple and Mark Mueller kind of heading it up with, uh, pastor Matthew doing the Bible study. And I think that's such an important thing because the women's group are all very organized yep. and to have these activities for the men to also be involved and have their little niche is uh, really a special ministry. Yeah. And it, it was a special time that, that those men got together and they cooked and they, uh, they cooked, uh, they had eggs and, and sausage and pancake breakfast all those years. And, uh, then a Bible study. Hank, I mean, not, yes, Hank Hester loved to bring round like donuts to whatever the event was. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, on Palm Sunday, it was traditional to have a Easter egg hunt, or it began, I think it really began when Susan Robinson was here, and we had it different places, but it ended up uh, many times at the Kemple Farm. So tell us a little bit about the, um, the Palm Sunday Easter egg hunt. Well... Once again, I was going to tell you, I don't remember how or when it started. Uh, I do remember the first time I went was at Jerry Eschberger's house. And then I think you hosted it the next year. That's correct. I remember going to the Mott's and uh, the kids had a little bit more room to roam around. And then the next year, somebody asked me if I would host. And... Uh, it was always so fun to see the kids scatter after the eggs and everything. I mean, uh, everybody loved the event. And of course, with the new Holy Smokers group, it turned into quite an event once they got started. I think so many of the children at that time also, because we had a very large Sunday school, yeah. and many of the children lived in town neighborhoods. And so coming out to the farm yeah. and having the space and so much, uh, I mean, it was like eye opening for them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, at one time also near your property, they had a fishing, <laughs> uh, what the rodeo was it? We had a fishing tournament. Okay. Um, that was when I served on the council the second time from, uh, I think 98 to Oh two. Um, Bob Lovett was on again, uh, on with me at that time. And, uh, he had his, he was, a a marketer. I mean, that was his job. And so we were always dreaming up ideas and, and the council really wanted to come up with some events that were, uh, could bring the church family and the community together. And so each, each, uh, group uh it was was asked to come up with an idea we didn't use them all but i remember the fishing tournament and the Oktoberfest, which we still do was was two of those ideas and and i don't remember how many years the fishing tournament was held it might have only been two or three years but uh we had quite a turnout and uh we had people that parked cars and shuttled people back and forth. So it was safe for the kids and, and they all, everybody I think enjoyed it. Had a good time. Yeah. You were on the council in 88 to 92 and that was, um, the big project was the renovation of the sanctuary. So tell yeah. us your memories on that. Yeah. I remember that project very well. Uh, of course, I was pretty young back then, and but I was excited, and you and Charles did such a great job heading that project up. But uh, 
I made a few notes. I I remember uh, we hired uh, Tony Sconci from Pat Sheet Metal to reflash the whole roof of the sanctuary with copper. And I would go up there several times during the week and have lunch with him. Uh, when I was teaching, I could come here. I had an hour off and he would bring his lunch every day and eat it on the steeple or in the bell tower or wherever he was working, you know, and I learned so much from him and my wife even got to go or, well, she was my fiance back then, but she got to go up in the bell tower and, and enjoy the view from there. But, um, we did the roof and we, let's see, we, uh, uh, repainted and we uh, put the wainscot along the wall and we added wood above the altar and and recovered the chairs in there around the altar and uh, I think John Lutke made or donated a cross to go up in 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 above the altar. John and I think Otto. They okay. They, they worked on that. Cross. Yeah. Um, and and the painting of the blue and the accent was blue. That was. The marbling. Previously, that, that yeah. gave depth to the uh, yeah to to the front of the church, but again, the that's called the chancel. But it it used to just have the same acoust, um, acoustic ceiling, but they made it wood yeah um, to enhance yeah that yeah. It was a great project. Wonderful memory. Okay, and then uh, after the one twenty fifth anniversary. Or on that day uh, in May of 1999, we had the groundbreaking for the big project on the um, day school in the gymnasium. Tell us about that project, taking nearly four years. Well, that was my next fun project up here. Uh, being on the building committee, and, and uh, uh, I, I joined that committee right away. Jerry Eschberger headed that up. And we had that committee for four years. We met uh, probably two years planning and two years building. Uh, it was quite a project. We we traveled to probably a dozen different churches looking at some of their projects, some of their gyms. I remember going to Palm, uh, uh, let's see, in Round Rock. We Palm went. Valley. We went to Palm Valley and Round Rock, and, and they had just done an addition. And we got a lot of good ideas and worked with some architects and, and uh, started that project. I was trying to remember the year. I guess you said 99. That's when the groundbreaking. In yeah. the approval of that, one of the big things I remember at the church meeting was um, because it was the first gymnasium of any church in Pflugerville, and it still is the yeah. only gym that has a wood floor. Right. But in that church meeting, there was a lot of discussion yep. and a close vote yep. on whether that gym would have a wood floor or other. Yep. Yep. Do you that, remember that? That was after the close vote on having a gym and, at all. <laughs> right. Because really when but, the yeah. fellowship hall, current, yep. current parish hall, was built, that was supposed to be the all-purpose building right. and gymnasium yes it could be used for anything yes and then it evolved differently yes yeah and so um yeah we ended up with the wood floor uh right or wrong i i know that the the people that rent out the gymnasium some of them can only use a wood floor so i know it has brought a lot more traffic through um our, our church, and, and I think it's been good for us. Well, and that facility, again, the day school and the gymnasium are part of an outreach. Right. Initially, uh, there was hope that our members would actually use the gymnasium. Yeah. And I think that some of the men did and played yeah. basketball on occasion. Yes. And our youth group used it uh, on occasion. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it was reserved on, I, I think, at least Sunday evenings for them. Yes. But um, I think now its main function is more of an outreach because it's rented nearly every night of the week. Right. Um, it's The community uses it quite a bit. So, again, on the council, uh, you were on from uh, 2019 to 23, and that was during the pandemic. Yeah. And we went through a lot of uh, interesting times. Uh, tell us about the challenges at that point. Well, 
each time I, each time I served those four years, you, you'd have some challenges and this one was no different. Um, the pandemic was, a, uh, I think it was a little extra challenging. I mean, our congregation struggled, our, our membership dwindled, uh, we scrambled to do online services, uh, which I think really turned out quite well. And I think uh, a lot of the, the members that aren't, aren't able to attend uh, still, still use that to this day. In fact, I know my wife has to work uh, on most Sundays, so she has to watch it. Mm -hmm. And so she, she enjoys having that opportunity. On top of the pandemic, uh, our longest serving pastor, Pastor Tom yeah. Kesselring, who served for how many years? 22 years. 22 years. He had retired just before the pandemic hit. So yes. we were not only hit with uh, the pandemic adjustment, but we yeah. did not have an in-house pastor at the we time. We had a large staff change at that time. Uh, and j just... Uh, by accident, really. I mean, we, Pastor Tom was retiring and, and both, we had two secretaries at that time that wanted to retire. And so it, it was really a struggle because we didn't really have anybody in the office to pass that torch to, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That, that transition period, we really, uh, had to reinvent the wheel there and and there was a lot of changes and it was real hard for uh, some of us older folks that weren't used to so many changes all at once and those two you called them secretaries but they were actually they ran they were like the office manager and did they did everything yeah I shouldn't, whether it was financial. I shouldn't label them as secretaries at all because at that time we had a pastor and we had the these two women on staff that ran everything else, the, the, the administration of the church. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Kemple family again has been uh, the, the ancestors go far back and uh, your family um, in honor of granny, our yeah. granny actually donated the three octave bell set, I think, in yeah. honor of your grandfather, Max. Yeah. And um, that was something that really enhanced our um, worship services for a while. That kind of fell through again with the pandemic, but it yeah. was a wonderful gift that is yeah. a lasting gift. Yeah. I always had a special connection with the bell choir because I enjoyed hearing those all the time. It brought back a lot of good memories. And I know my my grandmother really enjoyed hearing them uh, after she gave them. Um, and both Hal and Matthew were uh, two of the first bell ringers. Yeah, that, exactly. Yes. Right. Um, as a young person, you were in JC and company, and then you've been involved with the youth uh, as a teacher, Sunday school teacher. And uh, I know when Kara Clark was here, you did a lot of things with the youth. Yeah. Share any of those memories on how important youth ministry is. Well, um, as I stated in the beginning, uh, the church family has meant so much to my family and many other families here over the years. Uh, you know, when this church was formed, it was a community of families that worked together. They um, gathered together and they prayed together. And that's, you know, that's just how this, this church got started, as you well know. And my hope is that we can continue to do that. As the community grows and new families move in, I hope they are able to become part of our church family and continue that, that growth uh, for generations to come. I, I also wrote down... Uh, you know, about my youth experiences growing up here, uh, you know, they're very special being able to go to confirmation camp and then join in the JC and company and teaching other youth. And uh, let's see, being on the council again in 2000 when we hired our first full-time youth director. Uh, I know you and Nisi did 
quite a bit of work, but you know, y'all were volunteering at that time as I remember it. And I think Kara was our first paid youth director. And I was real um, proud to be a part of that. And I think it really continued the spirit of our youth programs here. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to add that we haven't touched on? I would like to ask you about the uh, church sign. Uh, we've just got a new church sign, and it's been, again, the, the long range or someone sees a vision, and it's just amazing how the members of, of Emmanuel will rise to whatever the need is or the project is to try to make it happen. Yeah. Well, that was another kind of special project. Um, I, <laughs> I can't believe, I think it took as long as building the gym <laughs> since we started that sign during COVID. Um, but yeah, it was a special project and, and uh, I had some special people helping me with that. And um, I think it, it, it was worth all the effort that we put into it. And, you know, the thing about it is uh, uh, the property committee, I know they built two other signs and Jesse Bowles, he's, he, we're still using the sign that he built out there. The day school uses it now. And, and you know, to me, uh, your sign is the first thing that people see in the community when they're driving by. And I I'm wanted to have something that represents us well. And we're in the technology age. So this was another step forward of Emmanuel being proactive. Yeah. Uh, and well, we've done so much uh, with the community. Now we have uh, uh, the new technology of the message signs that have the messaging and we can actually communicate with our community. If we have an event that they can attend, we can put that out there for them. Okay, so um, thank you. We read, thank you, James, for your time. And again, just in summary, from your heart, what does Emmanuel mean to you? Yeah. Well, I mean, to me, it sums up my whole faith. I mean, you know, uh, from beginning to end, you know, I look forward to being here and being a part of this. And, and I enjoy uh, visiting with the old members and I really enjoy meeting the new members. Uh, I was on the evangelism committee uh, the last time I served and I really enjoyed that. Very good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk. This world of toils and snares. If I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? None but thee, dear Lord. None. feeble life is old. Time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, safely, oh, to thy kingdom shore, to thy shore.